It's been a busy week in Albany. The Senate confirmed a new chief judge, the first black chief judge in state history. The Senate heard from another judge who would take his place on the Court of Appeals. And there have been trickles of news about the state budget, whispers of agreement on bail reform, a potential roadblock for affordable housing. But it's all very much still up in the air, three weeks after the state budget was due. An update on what could be in and out for New York's spending plan on today's story of the day. Support for Story of the Day is provided by Seacom Credit Union, serving the financial needs of people throughout northern New York and Vermont. In person, online at seacom.org, and on your smartphone. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Thursday, April 20th. First up. New York Senator Kirsten Gillibrand is proposing changes to the federal SNAP program, formerly known as food stamps, which provides financial help for low-income people to buy food. As Lucy Grindon reports, the bill would increase the minimum SNAP benefit and make more people eligible. Senator Gillibrand and other Democrats held a press conference in Washington this week to talk about a new bill she's introducing. It's called the Closing the Meal Gap Act. Gillibrand pointed out that the extra money that was added to people's SNAP benefits in the pandemic went away last month. Emergency allotments of the SNAP program just expired. So now the average SNAP recipient will get just about $2.03 a meal. That's less than the average cup of coffee. The bill proposes to raise the minimum SNAP benefit to a higher amount. It would also get rid of some current SNAP eligibility barriers, like the time limit on how long people can receive SNAP benefits while they're unemployed. We should be expanding SNAP, not restricting it. The Democrats' push to expand SNAP comes as House Republicans are pushing to tighten SNAP eligibility as part of the debt ceiling negotiations. Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has proposed raising the age limit for work requirements for SNAP recipients from 49 to 55, according to Politico. McCarthy said in a speech this week that restoring work requirements would ensure that adults earn paychecks and learn new skills. Senate Democrats have actually introduced six bills to expand SNAP access. One would add Puerto Rico to the SNAP program, and another one would make more military service members eligible for SNAP. Kathy Roth Duquette is the CEO of Blue Star Families, an organization founded by military spouses. She also spoke at the press conference with Gillibrand about food insecurity among service members. I represent the currently serving military and our families. 25 percent of enlisted are food insecure in America, currently serving military. Most service members are not eligible for SNAP because their housing allowances get counted as part of their income. The Military Family Nutrition Access Act, which Gillibrand also supports, would exclude military housing allowances from SNAP eligibility calculations. Lucy Grindon, North Country Public Radio. The hospitals in Plattsburgh and Malone are rolling back COVID-related masking and testing requirements. Masks are now optional for patients and visitors in all areas at Champlain Valley Physicians Hospital and Alice Hyde Medical Center in Malone. Employees still have to wear masks in patients' rooms, exam rooms, and while providing direct care. Anyone with COVID-like symptoms will be required to wear a mask. Both hospitals will continue to provide free surgical masks at their entrances for those who want them. The two hospitals are also no longer requiring asymptomatic patients to test before procedures. The facilities say the revisions align with State Department of Health guidelines. The state attorney general's office will co-host a community gun buyback event in Plattsburgh later this month. On Saturday, April 29th, the AG's office and local law enforcement will accept firearms at the Clinton County Fairgrounds in exchange for prepaid gift cards. Compensation ranges from $25 for a non-working gun to $500 for an assault rifle or ghost gun. There's no limit on the number of firearms an individual can turn in, but the guns must be unloaded and placed in a bag or box. This is an amnesty program, so no questions will be asked about the person dropping off the gun. New York State's budget is almost three weeks late, 
and will not be completed this week. Governor Kathy Hochul and the legislature passed a fourth spending extender today to get the state through the next few days. Karen DeWitt has a look at what's holding things up. Senate leader Andrea Stork Cousins says there will not be any agreement on a new spending plan until at least Monday. Unfortunately, it's not this week. But she says they are at the beginning of the end of discussions. I hope that we are able to just get to a point where we can, I can come in and tell you that it is the end of the end very, very soon. The Senate leader says the budget is taking longer to settle because Governor Hochul added many policy issues into her spending plan, including revisions to the state's bail reform laws. Hochul is seeking a change that would give judges more discretion to set bail when a defendant is accused of a serious crime. The change would eliminate a clause that requires judges to use the least restrictive means to ensure someone will return for a court date. There were some published reports that a deal had been struck on bail, but Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty, after a meeting with the governor, says there's no agreement. I don't think anything has been finalized, unfinalized. Hochul, who has not spoken publicly for several days, issued a statement indicating that another top budget priority for her, housing, may be on the ropes. The governor is seeking a state law to override local zoning laws. It's part of a plan to build 800,000 more housing units over the next several years. The legislature, facing blowback from suburban members, wants to instead offer grants to communities willing to build more homes. Hochul, in her statement, says after weeks of negotiations, the legislature continues to oppose core elements of the housing compact. She says she does not believe that incentives alone will solve the state's affordable housing crisis, but says she's willing to talk about other parts of her plan instead. Senate leader Stork Cousins would not confirm that any part of the governor's housing plan is now off the table, but she says any final deal must include protections for tenants. I've always said that within the context of all of this, we have to be very clear that we need real tenant protection. So I think those things have always been uh, the driving force around how we proceed with housing. It's a big, big objective. It's an important objective. Stuart Cousins would not say, though, that the tenant protections must include the good cause eviction bill supported by several lawmakers, including the Senate and Assembly chairs of the housing committees. You're the friend in New York State. Our care cannot wait. Earlier in the week, advocates rallied at the Capitol in an attempt to see their issues included as part of the budget. Home health care workers and their allies, including Maurice Brown with the Health Care Workers Union, SEIU, rallied for higher wages. We are living through the gravest cost of living crisis of 40 years. And New York faces the worst home care shortage in the nation because the state underpays home care workers. Stork Cousins says raising the minimum wage and indexing future increases to the rate of inflation are still being discussed, as well as Hochul's proposal to open more charter schools and funding for the downstate Metropolitan Transportation Authority. But she says nothing has been decided on anything yet. In Albany, I'm Karen DeWitt. We have more news all the time on our website, ncpr.org. I'm always dying to hear your feedback about this show or about any stories you hear on this show. Email me anytime, david at ncpr.org. Or if you're feeling ambitious, what I really love is a voice memo. Roll on your smartphone voice memo app with your name, where you live, and what's on your mind. Then email that sound file to david at ncpr.org. It's that easy. Thanks so much for the feedback. It helps us to do our jobs better. Music today by Danny Thomas of Canton and Pencil Dive of Saratoga Springs. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.